So here's a disturbing fact. In the past year, fibre optic cables carrying internet and telecommunications in the San Francisco Bay Area in California have been deliberately severed 16 times. Tonight, the FBI is investigating acts of sabotage against telecom companies here in the Bay Area. The FBI says the attacks are coordinated. An unknown person or group climbs down manholes to physically cut the cables. It means no internet, no phone calls, no ATM or credit card access. Why the Bay Area? It's home to Silicon Valley's leading tech companies and the Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory which happens to oversee the American nuclear arsenal. The FBI seem um, a little bit stuck. They don't know who's actually conducting it because it does seem fairly targeted. I mean, at the moment, the jury's out as to who it could be. Could be just a motivated criminal, but also, absolutely, you know, there could be some sort of state-led intent there. It's part of the murky, fast-moving frontier of cyber attacks. Every hack attack, computer virus, system outage or takeover raises the same questions. Is this a rival probing for weaknesses or trialling a new attack? Is it state-sponsored or terrorists or teenage hackers or a government hiding behind a criminal group? What is clear is that the world's big military players are all doing it all the time. It's absolutely going on every day and, and uh, you know, and, and a high frequency. It's a bit like the, the Wild West. It's a cyber Wild West. The first destructive cyber weapon was deployed by the United States five years ago. The computer virus called Stuxnet was planted in Iran's uranium enrichment program, shutting down the system. But there were unintended consequences. Stuxnet escaped, infecting other systems, and its success spurred today's frantic digital arms race. Probably 29 to 30 countries already have quite well-developed offensive cyber capabilities. This is quite a new development. Malicious code is the spearhead of a cyber weapon. The aim is to secretly pre-position it inside foreign systems and networks Increasingly sophisticated malware can even watch an opponent's response in real time and reshape its attack. Weapon systems are high on the target list. US military blueprints have been partially or wholly stolen for Patriot missiles, V-22 Ospreys, um, the F-35 strike fighter, um, an array of um, submarines, destroyers. Iran says it carried out an electronic ambush, took control of the drone and brought it safely to the ground. A year after Stuxnet, Iran reportedly hacked an American surveillance drone and tricked it into thinking it was landing in the United States when it was actually inside Iran. Earlier this year, a German Patriot anti-aircraft missile battery was reportedly hacked on the Syrian-Turkish border and executed some unexplained commands. The next war will entail a furious battle over command and control systems to try to neutralise weapons or turn them back on their own. But do any of these current cyber attacks constitute an act of war? There is no clarity around what constitutes a cyber act of war. It's shrouded in ambiguity. Um, because the law hasn't caught up with the technology. These days, countries don't declare wars on each other. They conduct them clandestinely. The problem is that right now, nothing seems off limits. Electricity grids, nuclear power plants, financial markets and civil aviation have all been targeted. One of the most recent instances that has really concerned I think, the global community, but certainly the South Korean government, um, was the probing of one of their nuclear facilities uh, around six, six to eight months ago. Now the Pentagon has declared publicly that it's developing computer code that can kill. US troops will have the power to launch logic bombs instead of conventional explosives. It'll cause enemy critical infrastructure to self-destruct and almost certainly cost civilian lives. And where the US leads, 
the Pentagon have put out half a billion US dollar contract for um, lethal cyber weapons, as they described it. Um, and I think you'd see that being replicated in a number of the most developed nations around the world. The Pentagon's also declared that in extreme circumstances, it reserves the right to attack civilian nuclear power stations or water supplies. I think we get into a very dangerous situation when we're developing offensive capabilities to specifically target critical infrastructure. If you hit one of those, they're going to have knock-on effects to hospitals and the provision of basic services. So, you know, there, there will be, um, if you like, those second-order effects which will affect the broader population. There are some quite doomsday scenarios out there. My own view is that we will get to an equilibrium point somewhere down the track where we'll get some kind of uh, emerging cyber deterrence, where because we're all cyber dependent, we all rely upon this technology, if you use it as a weapon against another country, they may use it back at you. So there will be a kind of natural deterrence. But the problem is we're a long way from getting there.